Hi, my name is Robin Wong. I'm a photographer based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. In this video, I want to do the ISO 200 challenge, which means I will fix my camera's ISO at 200 at all times doing low light night photography. Let's do this. I have actually done this ISO 200 challenge three years ago. I'll put the link to the video up here. Please check it out. I'm basically doing the same thing again because, hey, it is really fun to do. And I want to emphasize an important point. Your micro four thirds camera is a very capable camera. You can shoot low light with your camera. And there are many times that you can just get away with ISO 200 if you just trust your camera's image stabilization capabilities. And of course, this time I'm doing things a little bit differently. I'm showing you what my camera feed is directly capturing the screen so that you can see the settings that I adjust, how I compose my shots, as if you are here directly with me shooting through my viewfinder. The setup for this particular session is very straightforward. I'm shooting with my own Olympus EM1 Mark III. The lens is 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro. I'm shooting with aperture priority mode. I'm adjusting my aperture as I go along. I'll shoot mostly with wide open f2.8 to gather as much light as possible, but I will stop down to f4, f5.6 as necessary to get more depth of field. And the ISO, of course, is fixed at 200. That's the point of this challenge, staying at 200. And I don't care if the shutter speed dips to half a second, one second, two seconds or longer. I trust that the camera's 5 axis image stabilization is more than capable to handle the slow shutter speeds and give me stabilized shots. I'm currently shooting at Petaling Street in Kuala Lumpur. This place is a popular location for street photographers, but I'm not doing street photography here since I saw 200. I can't really freeze motion and I'm just looking for really cool sceneries or urban scapes and at night I believe that some things just look better. So I'm just roaming around seeing whatever that attracts my attention and I'll just shoot them with ISO 200. Some of you will ask, Robin, what is the point of doing this ISO 200 challenge? I get it, the 5 axis mesh stabilization is awesome. Well, here is the thing. A lot of people say that, oh, micro four thread system, the weakness is low light photography. When the light drops, when it's at night, I don't dare to use my micro four thread setup anymore. So here I am trying to prove to you that your camera is definitely more than capable in shooting in low light. And a lot of people also have this conception that you need to use very high ISO, ISO 3200, 6400 or beyond to get good enough photographs in low light. And because you're using very high ISO numbers, you get grainy images, there's too much noise and there's not enough fine details, there's color blotches everywhere and it just looks bad with high ISO images from micro four thirds. Well, here's the thing. You don't need high ISO for all your shots. In fact, a lot of shots with non-moving subjects, you can get away with very low 
ISO numbers. Here, I prove to you, ISO 200 can do the job. I understand, so I'll say, but Robin, how about moving subjects? What if I want to shoot people? Well, I've done a video recently shooting portraits using very high ISO numbers with my Olympus E1 Mark III. I believe the ISO was 12,800. I'll put the link to the video up here. Please check it out. That's a different topic altogether. For this particular video, I'm staying with ISO 200 and we can see that we can still get a lot of use full shots. I have to admit that the image stabilization is really reliable in Micro Four Thirds system and that's because the image sensor is smaller, there's more room for the image sensor to move, hence you get more stabilized shots. And this has changed the way I approach photography. I'm not asking you to shoot at dangerously slow shutter speeds like half a second, two seconds or five seconds. These are dangerous. If you do a lot of long exposure photography, then using a tripod is possibly a wiser solution. I'm saying that having a reliable image stabilization has a lot of benefits. It boosts my confidence in nailing the shots. Say that I'm shooting at about 1 10th of a second, 1 20th of a second. I don't have to second guess. I know that the image stabilization will definitely be more than enough to get to nail the shots. And that confidence, it really helps when I'm doing my jobs as a professional photographer. And I just don't have to worry or second guess if my shutter speed is fast enough. In case you don't know, ISO 200 is the base ISO for most Micro Four Thirds cameras, both from Olympus and Panasonic. And this means that you get the best possible image quality if you shoot at ISO 200. You get the best sharpness, best dynamic range, best color tonality, and everything is just optimized if you just stay at ISO 200. And if you're asking about noise in low light, what noise? ISO 200, you get perfectly clean results. It's definitely superior than, say, even if you use full frame at ISO 3200, 6400. The ISO 200 for a micro four thirds will definitely give you a better result. Look who I found! It's Mati Sulanto, my dear friend. We are doing some street photography together at night. And I'm going to ask him some questions. So basically, I'm going to ask Mati what he thinks of the image stabilization, the importance in the camera industry, and how has it affected his shooting style? Let's ask him that. Hey! 
Hey Robin, good to be in your video again. <laughs> Happy to have you. <laughs> stabilizer, image stabilizer, in-body stabilizer, all kinds of stabilizer. I'm a big proponent of stabilizers and uh, I think it's a great feature and it has helped me to create some pictures that I couldn't do without uh, stabilizer. But I also think it's not uh, like a, any kind of a miracle feature. There are still many situations where a stabilizer cannot help you, even in low light. Let's say I want to capture or freeze some motion right there. <coughs> The stabilizer can't do anything for me because I need a fast shutter speed for that. But still, I mean, um, it's a, it's an excellent feature and I have it on all the time on all my cameras or lenses if I have a stabilized lens. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And I also want to add that uh, the image stabilizer is not a replacement for tripod. If you are a photographer, you should have a sturdy tripod. Yes. That's all I have to share for this video. I hope you've enjoyed yourself looking at my photographs and I hope that you try the ISO 200 challenge yourself. Just pick up your camera, go out at night and fix the ISO to 200 in your camera and you can see what it can do with just ISO 200. If you found my sharing beneficial, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. Links in the description below on how you can do that. Any small contribution goes a long way or definitely help me to make more content and publish them right here. Until the next time, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.